In this video, I'm gonna walk through my exact local SEO keyword research process. So if you're a local business owner or if you do marketing for a local business with a physical storefront, if you stay to the end of this video, you're gonna learn the exact step-by-step -step process on how you could identify the best keywords to target in your city. So to start, there's a few different keyword research tools that are important to look at. So there's both free options and paid options. In this sheet, I've kind of mapped out my favorite keyword tools and have broken down which ones are free and which ones are paid. So Google Keyword Planner, if you don't have a paid keyword tool, is gonna to be your best option. And you don't need to pay for ads to get access to this tool. You just need to sign up for a free Google Ads account. Uh, you don't have to run any ads and you'll get access to this. Google Search Console, if you have an existing website and business that's been around a while, you can often find keywords inside of this tool. And that's where we're gonna start. So the very first step typically is if you have a Google Search Console account set up like this, you can see my website here, Google will give you this report that shows how much traffic your website's generating from organic search. And then you can see specific keywords your website's ranking for. We'll do um, this website here. If I click on full report or click on search results here, this will take me to, and I like to check off all the boxes here so we get all the data. This will take me to a report that shows all the keywords my website is showing up for. And what I like to do is just export this out of Google Search Console. And we'll export this into a Google Sheet. And this is a great way if you've been doing SEO or if you have a website that's been established, you'll typically find some keywords in here that you might not have thought of in terms of uh, targeting. So if I scroll, scroll out a little bit, we can see all the keywords my website's ranking for. Then you could scroll down and then start sifting through this and figuring out which ones are relevant. Now, that only works if you have existing data and you've done some SEO. And it's not gonna give you everything. It's just gonna give you a benchmark of where you stand right now for your existing keywords. Google Keyword Planner is gonna be where you can uncover a lot of your local keywords for free. So if we go inside of a Google Ads account, you'll typically land on the home screen here, and then we're gonna click on tools and then keyword planner. So there's a few options here. Get search volume and forecast is great when you already know the keywords that you wanna target. Discover new keywords is where you're gonna go when you're trying to identify uh, which keywords you wanna target. So we'll do an example with a self-storage business. So we're gonna do self-storage Dallas, Texas. And I do like to enter a website as well. So normally what I do is I search this keyword on Google. It helps make the results a little bit better. And then I basically just copy the, the link for the number one result and paste that in here. And we're gonna click get results. What I like to do as well, I also like to change the location to the market that you're in. So in this case, we're looking at Dallas, Texas. So we're gonna type that in and click target. And then you'll see it's gonna give us data just for this local area. Depending on how local your business is and how far out uh, customers will travel to you, you can add multiple locations if you want. But ultimately you type those in, we're gonna click save. And now this is going to give me a lot of the local keywords I'm gonna be looking for. So I could see storage Dallas, storage units Dallas. Then there's some modifiers like cheap storage units in Dallas. Then we have features like climate control. So no matter what local business you have, to use this tool, you're just gonna enter in a, a high level topic on what you do. If you're a dentist, you would put that in. Um, if you're a moving company, you would just type in moving Dallas or moving company. And you could play around with the keywords you type in and Google's gonna give you a bunch of related terms that are locally relevant to your market. And you could start checking off the ones you wanna save. Um, I like to, again, export all of this into a Google Sheet and then work with it there. But uh, you can work with it here as well and you can start looking through the keywords that make sense for your target. What I like to look at here is you want the local modifiers, but you really wanna start looking at what are the most relevant keywords to what you do. If you don't actually offer a car storage, this is not really a keyword you're gonna to wanna to focus on right now. So really just pick out the keywords that are most relevant. And then you could use metrics like monthly searches. This will tell you approximately how often the keyword is searched. You could see the trends here as well for monthly search volume. So it looks like this one here, cost is actually trending up. So that might be a good one to, to target, but ultimately we wanna find what's most relevant. 
I like looking at cost per click as well. Google will give us a low and high range of what you would spend per click if you were to bid on these keywords in Google Ads. Even if you have no plans of running ads, this is nice data to have because in general, what I see is if the cost per click is higher for the keyword, that sometimes mean the, means the keyword converts better because more advertisers are willing to spend money on that keyword and are driving up the price. Again, it's not perfect. Some companies have big budgets and they'll waste the money on keywords that don't convert, but it is a way to quickly identify um, potentially higher value keywords to target as well. But ultimately the metrics are nice, but you're really just gonna wanna go by instinct and what you think your target customer would search that is relevant to what you offer. And again, you're gonna see all the different local uh, style keywords just by using this tool. Now, once we have some keywords identified, we're gonna go back to get search volume and forecast. This is a really great tool to use as well because you could just paste in all the keywords right there. So in this sheet, I'm just gonna grab some of these keywords and we'll put all these in. So if you already know the keywords or you've done some research, you can paste all these in and then you could just get the data behind each of these. And again, same thing, I'm gonna want to, and we'll pick a different market for this one. We'll do Austin, Texas and we'll click target and save. And then now you'll see the monthly, monthly search volume and all the metrics change for this market. So it's a really good way to see how many people are searching locally, particularly for keywords like this, where they're not typing in uh, the keyword they're not typing in the city. They're just typing in the word storage or storage facility, but this, these searches are filtered down to the Austin area. So a lot of times with keyword research tools, when you can't filter by location, you're gonna get the volume nationally and it'll show that this is getting hundreds of thousands of searches, but that's not taking place in your city. So it's important to use this location feature to make sure it's relevant to your market. Same thing with near me searches. Near me keywords for a local business are gonna be some of the most important keywords. So whatever your business does, and then appending near me, again, this is gonna give you the real uh, search volume data, which is gonna be important just to get a feel and understand how many people are searching. So this is really all you're gonna need to do, and then you could export these keywords. And then once you have your local keywords identified, the next step is to figure out how you're actually gonna rank for those keywords. And there's really two tactics from a content standpoint. It's either you need to create new content because you don't have any content on the website that's relevant, or you already have a page and you need to optimize and improve it. And in terms of on-page SEO, those are your two main uh, tactics you can pull from. And then once you have a page optimized or you've created a new page or post specifically for these keywords, then it comes down to typically your website authority and link building. So that's something we'll save for a later video, but just starting and understanding which keywords that you wanna target is gonna put you ahead of a lot of your competitors who aren't spending the time to do this research. So there's other tools as well, like paid tools, and we'll cover those in case uh, anyone is using SEMrush or Ahrefs. Those are my two favorites. Um, so those, those are my two favorites in terms of paid tools, but we'll get to those. Now, I also like to build out forecast tools like this. What's cool about this template here is you could paste in all your local keywords, and then all you need to do is take the volume and then the cost per click low and high range from the Google Keyword Planner and it'll forecast, and this is more of an ad forecast, how much clicks you could approximately get, the range of how much you could spend on each keyword. So this is useful in calculating what your ad budget could be. Uh, then you could see conversions, low and high. In this case, we're looking at storage units, so it's rentals, but if you're uh, a moving company, this would be leads or phone calls. If you're another type of business, it would just be whatever your conversion is. And it'll actually also forecast your cost per lead or cost per conversion uh, in four different scenarios. So this could be pretty helpful to start forecasting what it's actually gonna cost you to get leads or conversions in your local market. And then what's nice about this, it shows you how you can actually optimize and get your cost per con conversion down. Because the, in this first scenario, we're looking at if the CPC is high and we have a low conversion rate, then we're looking at if we can improve conversion rate, then we're looking at if the CPC is low and our conversion rate's low. And then the best scenario is we have a low cost per click and a high conversion rate. Um, so this is just a nice to get a rough feel for approximately what these keywords can deliver on Google ads. And you could also use that data to inform what you might want to target on SEO as well. So working in spreadsheets is nice because you can build out some of these uh, templates and then all you need to do is input a little bit of data to run all of this automatically. So typically after you have 
uh, local keywords identified, like we spoke about earlier, you're going to want to optimize existing pages uh, or create new pages. And this is one example. I'm just pulling uh, from a couple of different storage websites, but you'll see uh, we have a bunch of different local keywords and we found the page on that website where we should target those keywords. So we have a, a New York City page, we have a Brooklyn page here, and then a Queens page. And then typically some of the things you're going to want to look at are the tags on the page, like the title tag, the meta description, your H1 heading. Uh, we have a full on-page SEO checklist here that covers all the different things and all the different aspects of on-page SEO that you could run through for each of your pages. And this process is very important to making sure you have a page that's properly optimized. And then you could shift your focus to link building and authority building. So in terms of paid tools, SEMrush and Ahrefs are two of my favorites. Now with Keyword Planner, you can get basically all the keywords you're really going to need, but some of these paid tools allow you to do some additional research and get some different data that those keyword tools provide. Um, so if we go do the storage example, let's do storage. What I like to do is type in my main service plus my main city. So if you go to SEMrush, it's keyword overview and then click search. So whatever your main service or product that you offer, plus your main city you're targeting, will give you a good jump start on the data and some additional keywords to help you with your research. So this will pull how many searches happen, the, a difficulty score, the intent behind the keywords, some trends. Ultimately, keyword variations is where I like to go because this is where you're going to discover those new keywords uh, that you might not have thought of. So. Here we go, we can start to see all the different storage keywords relevant to Dallas. And again, I can use this data to build my local keyword research list. SEMrush has a pretty cool feature here too, where you can input your domain and they'll actually give you a personalized difficulty score, uh, which is a newer feature in SEMrush that I like. And we could see, because I don't have any content or anything relevant about storage units in Dallas, you could see it's actually harder for me than what the tool actually suggests to rank. So this will factor in your kind of topical authority and your domain authority and a few different factors to determine how difficult it is for you specifically. So it's more of a customized difficulty score. So that's how you do it in SEMrush. Ahrefs, very similar. I like to do main service plus main city and just press enter in the keyword explorer tool. And then keyword ideas is one of the main ones I look at. You can look at a few other things like this is pretty cool. They'll give you a forecast on what they think the search volume is going to turn into over the next few months. Uh, parent topic is interesting. You can find some more related words there. Ultimately though, view all is what I like to do. So when you click view all, this will take you to a similar report that SEMrush has, where it's just going to give you all the relevant keywords related to this uh, seed keyword here. A lot of different ways you can filter by difficulty, by volume. Um, you could do questions, you could toggle on, you could be more specific and say you want this exact phrase in the keyword. I like to start with terms match because you're gonna get more ideas. But this will give you all the keywords you potentially need. And then all you need to do is go through this and pick the ones that are most relevant to your business. And yeah, those are kind of the main tools. Now, another method is looking at competitors to discover keyword ideas. So this is where these paid tools come in handy. So both of these, if we go to Site Explorer, and then we go to domain overview and then let's, let's grab, let's grab this website here. So what I would do is search the keyword that's most relevant. So your main keyword plus your location and grab any of the competitors that are showing up organically. And you could paste their URL into these tools and we'll actually be able to get these specific keywords um, that these pages rank for. So if we go to Let's go here and we'll click on this report and this will give us the specific keywords this page is ranking for. So again, we have their brand name, but here we go. Here we have now a non-brand keyword that's relevant. Here's another one. Here's another one here. So this can be a really good way to use competitors that are already doing well and uncover the keywords they're targeting. So they've kind of done the work already and done the keyword research. And all we need to do is put their website into Site Explorer. And this is how you do it in Ahrefs. Uh, click on keywords here, and this is going to uncover all the keywords that this page is ranking for. And you can see the position they're in, all the same metrics. And again, same thing. We'd want to go through this and pluck out the ones that are relevant to us. And really with those methods, there's not much more keyword research you're going to need to do. So even just using Google Ads Keyword Planner um, or using some of these paid tools, you're going to uncover 
all the local keywords that are relevant. And you, if you have multiple products or services, you would just search different seed keywords. So if you also have moving uh, services and not just storage, you would type that in and same thing, click on this and see all the keywords that are relevant. And you could just repeat the process in any tool of your choice. So those uh, will get you the keywords you need. And again, the key with local keyword research is finding the different cities that are appended to your main services. And if you offer multiple services, there's multiple combinations that you could have. And if you're in multiple markets and multiple cities and you have a multi-location business, then you're gonna to wanna to repeat this process for every city uh, that you're based in. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Again, the, with the free tools here, particularly Google Keyword Planner, Google Search Console, you're gonna be able to do 90, 95% of the keyword research that you need. And then these paid tools just uncover a few other features. They have a few other data points like difficulty scores, which are nice to have. So you don't need that. But if you do have the budget and you have Ahrefs, SEMrush, or really any of these tools, um, you can uncover keywords that way. I also really like AppSumo. It's a website where you can buy lifetime software deals and they typically have SEO tools on there. So you only pay one time and you don't have to pay monthly and you can get access to different keyword tools. Um, so you just need to go to that website and see what they have at the time. That's another way to get potentially paid tools if you don't want to have the monthly subscription. So ultimately going through that process, downloading all the keywords that are relevant. If you want to use a forecast tool kind of like this, that's kind of helpful for sifting through keyword ideas. And then once you have your local keywords identified, you're gonna to wanna to do something like this where you start mapping out your existing pages and then start mapping the keywords that you've uncovered that are most relevant to each page. What you'll probably find is there's gonna be a few keywords where you don't have a, a good page to match it to. And that's gonna be a good sign you need new content, whether that's a, a page or a blog post, that's something you can uncover. And then once you have this, then you're typically gonna to wanna to go through some type of on-page SEO checklist like this to make sure your page is fully optimized. And that gets you in a really good spot from an optimization standpoint. And then once that's all done, I like to sit back and just watch the data and see what's happening. And then based on what's happening, if your rankings get stuck on page two and you're not seeing progress, that's where you could start looking at link building and other tactics to see if that's what helps you get pushed over the edge onto the first page. So those are the main things I like to look for. Again, if you want access to the, the template we have here, just let me know. Um, this one's designed for self-storage, but you can apply this template to really any local industry. Um, you would just swap out the storage words with keywords that are relevant to your service. So like these are common categories I typically see, like near me, you would just replace storage with whatever service you have. Then you have your city-based keywords. You have your broad keywords where they're not typing in a city or near me and you just wanna filter the data down to your location to see the true search volume. And then you have typically like other features or other types of services. For storage, we have different types. We have RV, vehicle, container, climate control. Um, for other types of businesses, it, these might be your additional services that you offer. And then we also have a few other things on like pricing and questions that people ask. Um, and this template also has our keyword sitemap that you can use to get a good feel and understand how your pages are currently optimized. And then it has room here for you to fill in adjustments on what you want to change to optimize the page better. Uh, it has our on-page SEO checklist in here. And then we also have a local SEO audit checklist. And the goal of this is to really boost your rankings in the map packs. So this can be pretty useful. Um, we're constantly adding to this template. One thing we're working on is a backlink quality checklist. So that's going to be something new that gets added to the sheet over time. And then our marketing channel ROI checklist, or not checklist, uh, analyzer. This is something uh, you can use to analyze the different marketing you're doing and start to get a feel for which ones are performing well. So all of this we continually updated uh, over time. So if you want a copy, just let me know. And then any other questions, let me know in the comments.